Tonight, a school is going out of their way to make sure their students get a healthy snack, the benefit from their Farm Fresh Friday program. Plus, the tough decision Senator Elizabeth Warren has to make just days after dropping out of the race for president. But first, coronavirus is still making headlines as new cases arise. The precaution one Texas city is taking to prevent the virus from spreading more. Thanks for joining us for the KSET News at 9, streaming from here inside the KSET 12 newsroom. I'm Patty Santos, in for Myra Arthur. Well, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention confirms two coronavirus patients here in San Antonio are now discharged. Both patients were quarantined Diamond Princess cruise ship passengers. One patient was released Thursday and the other today. Uh, there are now nine evacuee patients at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland and around Texas, six confirmed cases, all near Houston. Across the nation, more than 20 people on board the Grand Princess cruise ship testing positive. The ship still waiting off the coast of San Francisco. Today, President Trump visiting the Centers for Disease Control in Atlanta and the FDA now warning of a shortage reporting some antibiotics and penicillin may run out. The South by Southwest Arts and Tech Festival is canceled. Austin's Mayor Steve Adler made the announcement today. I've gone ahead and uh, uh, declared a, a local disaster uh, in, uh, in the city and associated with that uh, have issued an order uh, that effectively cancels uh, South by Southwest. No one in the capital has been found to have the COVID-19 virus, but South by Southwest was expected to draw people from around the world. The festival was scheduled for March 13th through the 22nd. Well, spring break could very well feel the impact of the coronavirus. The city's main attractions like SeaWorld and the San Antonio Zoo are trying to reassure visitors that they have health and safety protocols in effect, yet many already have decided to avoid the crowds. However, quite a few people were still out and about today enjoying the sights and great weather. Many were here for events that were planned well ahead of the current outbreak. The sponsors of the Bernie High School Chamber Singers say it didn't change their plans to sing the national anthem at the UIL Girls Basketball Tournament. I think that the officials are doing a good job of containing it and doing the things that they need to do. And we've got people that have really bad flu more than we've got people with the virus. Now, her students who indicated their parents weren't concerned are still aware of the necessary precautions like hand washing to lessen any risk to their health. A local school district's initiative is helping students become well nourished through a balanced diet of fruits and vegetables. Once a month, the district serves foods from farms from all across Texas. Tiffany Huertas has a look at the impact this program is having on students. They have like tomatoes that are super good and they have corn, which is awesome. I love it. It's amazing. At Cole Elementary School, fifth grader Haley Fabling says she is excited about vegetables. I actually eat a lot of more. I've tried different types of vegetables and I'm like, okay, well, what should I try today? Should I try this vegetable or should I try that? That's thanks to Northside ISD's Farm Fresh Friday initiative. The first Friday of every month, the district partners with farmers to bring fresh fruits and vegetables to all schools. Today, it's grape tomatoes. Well, tomatoes have lycopene and uh, it's a great antioxidant, so it's very healthy. Um, they also have potassium, and they have vitamin C. The district dietitian Risa Ripma says these came from Marfa, Texas. They've been grown in big greenhouses. They are hand-picked and fresh and taste great. Ritma says leading up to Friday, the kids receive activity sheets so they can learn more about the produce they are eating. It's in an effort to collaborate with farmers and to get the kids more educated and aware of agriculture and the importance of eating fruits and vegetables. Like I used to hate vegetables, but now like, I, like they're good for your body and I understand like that I need to eat them. The program has been going on for three years and the costs are covered through the Child Nutrition Department's budget. The food varies depending on the season. For The Nine, Tiffany Huertas.
Thanks, Tiffany. With all the talk about the coronavirus, it may be easy to forget about the threat of the flu. We have the latest numbers of child deaths. And President Donald Trump visits the devastation in Tennessee, the promise he's making to residents. And an elderly woman handcuffed and booked for doing no crime. Here's tonight's 9 at 9. At the end of February, influenza activity was still high in most of the U.S. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention reports the flu has killed 136 children. Besides the H1N1 flu pandemic in 2009, that is the largest number of pediatric flu deaths ever reported for this time of the season. And the hospitalization rates among school-aged children and young adults are also up. A San Antonio youth pastor has been arrested for child sex crimes. 40-year-old Clayton Turner accused of inappropriately touching a 12-year-old girl and sexually assaulting her. Turner was taken into custody today after the victim came forward at school. The sheriff's office says he is a youth pastor at several places and they believe there could be more victims. He now faces a charge of aggravated sexual assault of a child. The damage extends for miles. Today, President Trump seeing it himself. Major damage still left behind following Tuesday's deadly storm in Nashville. I have a message for the families of uh, those that lost their lives. And we love them. They're special people. Statewide, 25 people were killed by the tornadoes. All missing residents now counted for. Attention turning to cleaning up and rebuilding. President Trump promising more federal aid. After eight hours and two days of deliberation, a local woman convicted of intoxication, manslaughter and intoxication assault charges was sentenced. We assess her punishment at the confinement at the, in the Institutional Division of the Texas Department of Criminal Justice for a term of six years. Rosalinda Olalde was found guilty Wednesday for driving drunk and crashing into a car, killing 22-year-old Mario Velasquez Palau in 2018. According to testimony, Olalde was driving 80 miles per hour and her blood alcohol level was more than twice the legal limit. Two suspects led California deputies on a wild chase after shooting at a patrol helicopter and deputies. The chase initially began after deputies suspected the driver of being under the influence. Deputies were able to put out spike strips to slow down the chase. Oh, starting to spark there. Looks like that left front, left front lost another tire. Or maybe that was one of the original ones you lost. He's really sparking now. The driver then runs on foot straight into oncoming traffic, getting hit by cars in the process. Deputies were able to swarm him and take him into custody as he continued to struggle. The passenger was also arrested. Five businesses are now destroyed following a fire at a shopping mall plaza in New Jersey. It started in a cake shop where employees called 911 saying they smelled smoke. Within 20 minutes, the whole building was on fire, eventually spreading to other businesses like a pet grooming store and daycare. No one was hurt. The cause is still under investigation. A big headache for several people in a Southside neighborhood brought on by car burglars. They got into about a dozen cars and trucks in a subdivision near Southton Road and Interstate 37. Now, those car owners are hoping surveillance photos might lead to some arrests. The photos show a bearded man in a hoodie tugging on car doors. Police say in almost all of the burglaries, the vehicle doors were unlocked. In one case, the thief took an entire truck. So far, no arrests have been made. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex both attended fundraisers last night, making their first official engagement since deciding to step down from royal duties. Both the Duke and Duchess spoke and presented awards with Harry, choosing to focus a part of his speech on the merits of service. All eyes will be on them on Monday during the UK's Commonwealth Day. A North Carolina woman celebrated her 100th birthday in jail. Ruth Bryan says she's lived a century and has never been arrested. So county deputies made her bucket list wish happen. I know she's 100, but I didn't know it was <laughs> they would be going this far. They arrested Bryan at her assisted living center and gave the jailbird the full criminal treatment. She later returned home and celebrated with a big party. To read more about these stories, head to ksat.com. <laughs> All right, Katie Blake is here. Katie, it's going to be a great weekend. It's going to be comfortable. It's not good. Patty was just saying it was so beautiful today, and it was. 
We're going to have a, more clouds around this weekend than what we saw today, but no rain and it's not going to be too hot. So yeah, not too bad. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, did you notice those high thin clouds we had around today? Those are cirrus clouds. Those are the highest clouds we have uh, possible in our atmosphere and they were streaming in overhead during the day today, but late this afternoon, early this evening, we started to see, as you can see here on the time lapse, a higher coverage of those cirrus clouds moving in and they started to thicken up a little bit, especially as we got closer to sunset this evening and they'll continue to stream in really nicely overnight. We'll even see some lower clouds roll in by tomorrow. Um, I do want to uh, give you a heads up that we've got daylight saving time starting on Saturday night early, early Sunday morning. So this should actually read Saturday. So tomorrow our sunset will be at 637 on Sunday. Sunset will be at 730. Eight. So tomorrow, similar to what we've been experiencing the past couple of months, it will be Sunday that both our sunrise and sunset times will be later. So don't forget that's coming this weekend. This is also the not fun time change because we spring forward and lose an hour of sleep. So make sure to factor that in. I know this is not, this is the one that everyone's like, just do away with the time change. It's like, stop messing with us. So that's coming this weekend. Here's a look at your weekend forecast. Uh, we're going to have a thick batch of clouds moving in overhead tomorrow due to a weak upper level disturbance. And that's going to keep a lot of clouds around, especially through the first part of the day on Saturday. Then we should start to clear out in the afternoon and evening and salvage a pretty nice Saturday evening and Saturday night afternoon temperatures upper 60s. We'll start to warm up a little bit more on Sunday, but Sunday is when we'll start to settle into that pattern of really overcast gray skies in the morning, maybe even a little bit of patchy fog and drizzle. And looking ahead to spring break week, if you're staying here in San Antonio and South Texas, is we're going to have a lot of clouds around next week, but not a whole lot of rain to speak of. And look at our temperatures climbing from the low 70s on Monday into the low 80s by the end of next week. So the bigger story for spring break is the spring like warmth that will be settling in and also a big uptick in humidity. So it's been really dry the past couple of days and even tomorrow and even on Sunday, the humidity will be OK. It's not going to be that bad, but these numbers will be starting to climb such that we're back in muggy territory as we get into the early and middle part of next week. So very humid, muggy air in place next week, along with afternoons in the upper 70s and low 80s. So I guess it's nice weather for spring break. We'd rather it be more spring like than more winter like. But with all the clouds, we would like to get a little bit of rain on our very dry ground. Unfortunately, rain chances are going to just be very slim at best, a 20 to 30 percent chance of some isolated showers, especially as we get toward the end of spring break week. All right, thanks, Katie. You're welcome. Well, today marks the anniversary of the final day of the Alamo in 1836. To honor those that died in the battle, the San Antonio Living History Association puts on the Dawn at the Alamo ceremony. Our Erica Hernandez tells us why some history buffs think it's important to remember the Alamo. Shots fired in honor of the estimated 189 men who died in the Battle of the Alamo that ended March 6, 1836. The San Antonio Living History Association continues to remember those fallen men with its Dawn at the Alamo event with a ceremony. Well, history is history. You can't change it, it good and the bad of it. Some people try to take away the bad of it and just leave the good, but it's all history. It all. You know, it's all part of our heritage. The ceremony included songs by a local high school choir, reenactments, and moments of silence. Texas history buff Jason Lippert drove from Fort Worth for the ceremony, calling it a one-of-a-kind experience. Chills down your back of your neck. It's just, it's awesome. Can't repeat it. Living history interpreter Ron Moulton says you can't forget those men who died and fought in the Alamo because he believes they gave us so much. Those men you know, uh, fought for all their worth, gave it their all, so that we could be standing here talking to each other today. For The Nine, I'm Erica Hernandez. All right, we'll be right back in just one minute. This is the first time that we are serving pineapple dole whip here at the San Antonio Zoo and we're super excited to serve it. It's a super popular item at other theme parks and other resorts around uh, the United States so to have it come here to the San Antonio Zoo is going to be amazing. 
So we are gonna serve it in a pineapple and it's going to come with whipped cream and a cherry. We also have another flavor, it's a strawberry flavor. So it's strawberry dough whip, pineapple dough whip, and then you can get a mixture. Something that's super exciting that we also get to sell is our pineapple upside down funnel cake. So it's gonna be your regular funnel cake and instead of vanilla ice cream, you're going to get pineapple ice cream. So it's the pineapple Dole Whip that is gonna come on top of the funnel cake with your powdered sugar, your whipped cream, and cherries, along with some cherry juice, just to give it that natural flavor. Well, the race for the White House is reshaping now that Senator Elizabeth Warren dropped out. Senator Bernie Sanders and former Vice President Joe Biden are now fighting for her support. Biden tweeting, quote, Senator Warren is the fiercest of fighters for middle class families. Her work in Washington, in Massachusetts and on the campaign trail has made a real difference in people's lives. Biden held a fundraiser in Maryland today and Sanders will be in Michigan tonight. Both have spoken with Warren. However, Warren voicing disappointment in the turn that the race has taken essentially. It's now a two men race. I was told at the beginning of this whole undertaking that there are two lanes, a progressive lane that Bernie Sanders is the incumbent for and a moderate lane that Joe Biden is the incumbent for. And there's no room for anyone else in this. I thought that wasn't right, but evidently I was wrong. And timing for any sort of Warren endorsement is critical now. March 10th is the Michigan primary. 125 delegates are at stake. It could be a big boost for either candidate. And just a reminder, KSET News at 9 is helping you stay informed this election year. We have a newsletter breaking down the big races and political news. The Vote 2020 newsletter is emailed out every Tuesday. To sign up, just go to ksat.com slash newsletter. Here are today's top stories. The effort to keep pre-K 4SA going in San Antonio already underway. The Keep Pre-K SA campaign launching today with that goal to support for pre-authorization of the sales tax, which will be on the ballot in May 2nd. The early education program serves 2,000 kids in four education centers in the city. And by the end of the eighth year, officials say more than 25,000 kids will have been impacted. The FDA is promising to crack down against fake CBD products. CBD is a hemp-derived product that has only a tiny amount of THC, the psychoactive ingredient in marijuana. The FDA has approved only one CBD-based prescription drug so far, which is used to treat epilepsy in children. The agency says it has concerns about the other over-the-counter uses for CBD that may pose a risk to the public. The 2018 Farm Bill legalized hemp and opened the door to wide use of CBD in a, in a number of products. The Trump administration filed an emergency petition today asking Supreme Court justices to allow the controversial remain in Mexico asylum policy. The policy mandates that non-Mexican asylum seekers must stay in Mexico as they await their U.S. hearings. It has resulted in the creation of makeshift camps where migrants wait for weeks, if not months. The Ninth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals is allowing it to remain in effect just long enough for the Supreme Court to consider whether to step in. Just because you see something trending online doesn't mean it's accurate. At the end of every week, the Associated Press puts together a roundup of some of the most popular but completely untrue stories and images of the past several days. Here's our first claim of the night. Vice President Mike Pence shook hands with potential coronavirus patients. This is false. Last Friday, the Vice President met with cadets from the Sarasota Military Academy in Florida for a fundraiser. 
Days later, the academy posted on Facebook that a student was later observed for possible coronavirus infection. The vice president's press secret secretary responded on Twitter that Pence did not meet or shake hands with that student. Here's another claim. Tonight, former New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg spent $500 million on ads for his 2020 Democratic presidential campaign. With that much money, he could have given each American $1 million and still have money left over. Here are the facts. The Bloomberg campaign did spend at least $500 million on various ads, but the math doesn't add up. The U.S. population is 327 million people, which means each American would only get about $1.53. And here's another last claim tonight. President Barack Obama waited until October 2009 to declare a national health emergency amid the swine flu pandemic after the 20,000 hospitalizations and more than 1,000 deaths. Well, this is false. Obama declared a public health emergency in April 2009 after roughly 20 cases of the flu strain. And then the president also requested Congress approve a $1.5 billion emergency funding package to combat the pandemic by the end of April. By October, there were a thousand deaths in which he then declared a national emergency. Well, a little money can go a long way. That was the motto of one local company that helped their employees lend a hand to someone in need. Max Massey explains in tonight's 210 Trailblazers. For a lot of companies, one of their top priorities is helping out the community. But now a local small business is helping out even more by putting cash in the hands of their employees. Last year at Christmas time, we, we told each employee that we wanted to donate $1,000 to a charity that they uh, chose, but it was just a writing of a check. And so this year, we wanted to do something more impactful. We gave each employee $1,000 in cash. Uh, there was 25 employees in addition to the owners of the company. And so uh, $25,000 went out and made an impact in our community. And, um, you know, based on some of the initial feedback we've got, we know that that number will be a lot larger. And we blessed kids, we blessed families, we blessed, um, you know, ministries, non lots of nonprofits, uh, even just random acts of kindness to uh, the homeless or to uh, a waiter at a restaurant. One of our two gentlemen paid off school lunch debt for kids in the Northeast Independent School District, and that was really cool. So there was just a broad spectrum of giving. Uh, that was unique to their hearts and what they you know, felt called to do. You know, honestly for me, uh, seeing, seeing the reactions from the recipients is always heartwarming. Seeing the just reactions from our team and what it meant to them and the smiles on their faces as they did it and as they came and reported back meant even that much more because I know that that's where the real power comes from of, of teaching people, showing them, giving them the opportunity. And I know each one of them are gonna go do it more with their own dollars now. And so, and tell their friends, right? And tell their family and just, um, that's what's so cool is knowing that what we did here uh, will go on way beyond here. And if you know someone who has a unique San Antonio story or a unique San Antonio business, reach out to us on Instagram right now at KSAT News. For the nine, Max Massey. Well, a lot happened this week. Here's a recap of some of the stories from the week in case you missed it. New tonight, a judge denying the city of San Antonio's court filing to prevent the release of coronavirus evacuees. The San Antonio City Attorney's Office seeking a temporary restraining order that would have prevented the more than 120 people who have completed their 14-day quarantine at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland from being released by the CDC. The city wanted those evacuees to have been confirmed negative for the virus or have completed a 28 day quarantine before their release. The temporary restraining order was one of two approaches the city is taking in an effort to keep exposure to the public very low. More than a quarter of a million Bear County voters cast a ballot in the March primary. The elections office said that is a record breaker, but it also led to some problems. Results came in much later than we're used to seeing. Elections Administrator Jackie Callanan says that's because the county's tabulation system crashed 
three times. Even with vendor support available on site last night, results were not made public until well after midnight. When asked about whether that software can handle a possible surge in voters come November, here's what Callanan had to say. I would like to say yes, but I think that's one question that I, I can't answer. Well, here at home, it's the eve of the 184th anniversary of the fall of the Alamo, and Texas Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick is sounding off on plans to redevelop Alamo Plaza. In a statement today, Patrick called the project badly off track and placed the blame on the General Land Office, which oversees the project. The Lieutenant Governor criticized the design he had seen for the plaza and says, he is opposed to moving the cenotaph. Other elements of the Alamo master plan include restoring the church and long barracks and creating a visitor center. Happy Friday, same rooftop weather, just a different roof. We are being hosted this week by the Witty Museum. We are on the serenity floor of the HEB Body Adventure here at the Witty. And some of you may need some extra serenity as we head into spring break. You've got the kiddos coming home from school all week. And this thing called coronavirus is kind of freaking all of us out just a little bit. So let's get some serenity up here. Just wash your hands. It's going to be okay. We've had so much sunshine the past couple of days, but we'll see an increase in cloud cover this weekend. Saturday, especially through about midday, things will be pretty overcast, and then we'll clear out a bit in the afternoon. High temperature in the upper 60s. As we get into Sunday, it'll be a little bit warmer, but we will see mostly cloudy skies. Parkour. All right, you guys, there's a ton going on at the Witty. Check out their new Backyard Adventures exhibit. We did a Blake's Brainiacs on that. It is really fun. Have a great and safe spring break. Well, that's all the time we have for the news at 9. We will see you on Monday. The night beat starts in just 30 minutes.